Jesus Christ, why does this come out so late? Of course it was the night that I got terrified by the sister of Gage Animatronics. Go check out that video when you're finished. I started a playthrough of... Well, I made a video on me playing the first and second night of that sister location. Don't know if I'm going to continue it, though, because I'm terrified. <laughs> Anyways, hey everybody, it's the Butter Minecraft, welcome to another video, and today we're going to Game Theory, if I can portrait mode this, the murky history of Minecraft's underwater gods, and from the thumbnail, thumbnail Ah, my goodness, my charger's booty cheeks. Charger's ass. Good. Fix it. God dang it. <laughs> this should do it. As long as they don't move it. Anyways. <clears throat> Doing for the thumbnail, it looks like this is about the drowns, which is like these weird zombies, except instead of just spawning anywhere on land or in dungeons or caves or anything like that, they spawn in the water. Not only that, but they spawn with the most advanced, in fact, the most advanced weapon. In Minecraft, the Trident, which can do all sorts of things. Like, if you have, I believe, channeling on it, something like that. Um, I believe with raining, you can summon lightning. You can also throw it. And make it return to you, like Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. Or however, however you pronounce it. I don't know if I pronounced that right. But yeah, drowned are very mysterious. And I feel like they kind of dropped out of nowhere. I think they went in around the time Minecraft was doing, like, updates to the, the war or whatnot. After the uh, Sea Temples and Guardians and all that, but before stuff like, I believe, Coral and and sam Salmon and all that, and con Conduit and all that, but yeah. If ever, we're going to be looking to what part the Drowned play in Minecraft's lore, which seems like it's about gods. They, they play the role of gods, which I can kind of see with the sea temples and all that. But, hey, let's just see what's up. Is that supposed to be a pressure of the Spongebob there? Because it's a damn good one. Whoa, 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 whoa! All today. All right. Then. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where today we're engaging in a very mature 13 plus critical analysis of a fun for all ages game. <laughs> Got keep copper away. Just a second. All right. I, I am still sick. I'm hoping I'll be better tomorrow. Although I've been sick since Black Friday. So. I, I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> And and I'm 14, and I, I don't even know what any of those mean except for that last one. Rampant consumerism and that 2020 copper purge. If you 
want to help protect this channel while also showing your theorist pride and staying cozy this winter season, brand new theory wear is available right now, right below this video. We've got everything from a glow dark. Oh yeah, they are. They did make new theorist wear. Oh, and that's about the live stream they're doing. Scott made a new FNAF game, which is Freddy in Space 2. Which is the game that they're going to do and fi find hidden stuff in to raise money for s to donate to St. Jude's. Well, well, it's it's to find money. It's to find stuff in the game. That will, that will, and if they find that stuff, whatever it is, then Scott will donate however much money they technically find. I get, I don't really know how to explain it, but they find stuff in the game, and um, it equals money out of Scott's wallet <laughs> in real life. And however much money they accumulate, that's how much money that... However m many of the things they find equal how much money Scott's going to be donating to St. Jude's. And it's up to half a million dollars. So it's a pretty big deal. So you guys... But better, you guys better be there during the Game Theory live stream. Daco and Markiplier are going to be there, and it's going to be a fun time, I'm sure. So I hope to see all of you there at least at some point throughout the day. Scott Coffin literally just revealed on Reddit that the game is going to contain in the city half a million dollars. Yeah. Jude, not Jude's. Gotta remember that. The thing is gonna be a blast, and all of it is in honor of an incredible cause. So please, please try and make it so we can make the holidays just a bit brighter for some amazingly brave kids out there fighting for their lives. All right, with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get. Let's talk some Minecraft, shall we? Today we're getting our little mermaid on and going down where it's wetter, down where it's better, under the sea. In Minecraft, the underwater biomes just don't seem to get enough love. Sure, everyone is always excited to make songs dedicated to the fiery death. <laughs> Yeah, not much has been explored. I know that. No, that water is cold. No, I'm just gonna sit on my butt and talk about oceans in a video game for about 18 minutes. What's the deal with the guardians and the elder guardians? Where did they come from? 16. They just giant fish creatures that really like hanging out in ocean monuments? Did they build the ocean monuments? Seems pretty unlikely. And speaking of those buildings, what's the deal with those massive underwater mazes? How did the drowned fit into all this? What are these trident wielding mer people? Are they just zombies that fell into the water? Get ready to take the plunge because today and next episode we're done. I actually always thought they were like people or something. Yeah. Like I, I actually had the idea that there were people before us. I didn't really go deep into it, but I did have that sort of thought. It's like, you know, people drowned and became the drowned or something, but I, I never really understood it. Giant Cyclops puffer, puffer fish. Laser. And mining fatigue. If it's the Elder Guardian. <laughs>
guardian or elder guardian out of the water just flops around on the dry land like a cubic man oh they guard. can't the die from that is what doesn't happen is I thought they would eventually just die it doesn't suffocate when exposed to the air it huh. literally just keeps flopping around until you carve it up to make sushi well it's just a video game mechanic i hear you saying and you'd be right if only other fish behave the same way exactly Oh. Anyway, the guardians and the elder guardians are the only undersea creatures that can live indefinitely on the land. So between that and the laser eye thing, there was just something, pardon the pun, fishy about them. Hmm. Or actually, that's completely the wrong pun because it was something that didn't feel fishy about them. Something that felt a bit less like an animal and a bit more like a machine. Let's look closer at the machine? guardian. Notice the colors of its flesh and the crack. What is this, FNAF? Oh. I think not. That isn't just my observation either. In Minecraft's official mob bestiary, an in-depth guide written from the perspective of an animal researcher in the Minecraft world, they specifically allude to this fact. Quote, their skin is cracked, as if carved from some ancient rock, and their single white eye is somehow both unknowable and cruel. Ancient rock, you say? Like, perhaps prismarine? The very same stone that serves as the primary building block for all ocean monuments? The only place in the game where they spawn? Further supporting the idea that the Guardians aren't made of flesh, but rather of prismarine stone, is their drop behavior. When killed, the Guardian has a 40% chance of dropping prismarine crystal, which... That is true. Doesn't make a whole lot I mean, of I didn't know the percentage, but... If you sheep, it drops you wool. If you drop a cow, it drops you, like, cow flesh. But if you're a non-organic creature built from the nearby... I guess that makes sense. Well, that can certainly explain a whole lot. And speaking of their drop behavior, the Mobbeast Diary does a drop of its own. Another interesting tidbit about the Guardians. Quote again, Elder Guardians will also drop a water-absorbing sponge if killed by an adventurer. And if it doesn't drop a prismarine crystal, one will find raw fish of some kind in its place. Some scholars think that this is evidence that its diet consists of fish and other natural watery food stuff, but Guardians have never been seen to wander far from their temple homes to catch them, so we cannot be sure. And hmm. it's an odd detail to include there at the end, right? to specifically call out hey they drop fish meaning that they might eat fish but you know considering the fact that they never leave the ocean monuments they spawn in they probably don't eat fish again all the evidence seems to be pointing to these creatures not being animals yes i'm sure we've all assumed them to be but rather some sort of artificial creation a defense mechanism built of the surrounding materials somehow mixed with real life fish or real life fish dna to protect the very monument that they spawn inside even the creature's anatomical design inside the mob bestiary seems to contain some level of secrets. For most other mobs in the game, the book has this incredible illustration of their inner workings. The dense skeletons of the creeper, the humanoid brains of the enderman. But for the elder guardian, we get ourselves a piece-by-piece -piece dissection of the eye. Oh. Components that look kind of like wires, leading to panels meant to charge up its laser. And underneath that thick rock, I'm foreign a laser. A thin layer of pink with a gray area that appears to be stone. It's certainly not any sort of bony structure. It's not anything that resembles the inner workings of a fish, and it's certainly not anything that looks remotely organic. Lastly, it's worth noting that the Elder Guardian's eye will still have the ability to track a player who is invisible, seeming to suggest that this mob is dealing in the third oh. spectrum, tracking your heat signature rather than any sort of visual oh. so I did not know that. inside ocean monuments and they're called guardians if they were indeed man-made well clearly they were made to act as some sort of security mechanism but then what are they supposed to be protecting well despite ocean monuments being massive complexes there's really only two unusual rooms worth calling out inside of them the sponge room and the treasure yeah. room. the first is fairly self-explanatory it's the sponge room it is a room full of sponges there's not much more to say yeah here. i'm personally more of a loofah man myself but still it's <laughs> that whoever built this enormous building deemed it necessary to dedicate a room to this one oddly specific item more on that in a minute because it's the treasure room that i and i think the guardians want to focus on you see while every monument may not necessarily contain itself a sponge room all monuments do contain themselves a treasure chamber a central area with a tall ceiling and eight gold blocks located in the middle gold blocks that are encased or hidden 
behind a layer of dark prismally. And it's this right here that is perhaps the most oddly specific design choice hidden in the entire game. Here we are in the middle of this massive underwater complex made entirely of one material. Just varieties of prismarine everywhere. That's it. And yet smack in the middle, the designers decide to include this massive golden box. All right, that alone would make some kind of sense, I guess. Displaying your prized treasure like it's a core to the entire building. But it's the fact that the gold is hidden under another layer. That the gold is literally encased within a box of dark prismarine, within a box of another stone hidden away that really strikes me as noteworthy here. And it's those details, coupled with the overall design of the structure, that leads me to believe that the ocean monuments were made to be religious buildings. First, let's just oh, God. looking at the overall design of the ocean monument. It's a classic ziggurat structure. A staircase-like building with wide, flat landings that get narrower each level up. Basically, it's like a big pyramid, but with some... Really? I was about to say... My mind has actually kind of been blown. Stopping points as you get higher, whereas a more traditional pyramid like those in Egypt consists of a smooth, continuous line all the way to the peak. Ziggurats were famous in ancient Mesopotamia, basically the first place you learn about in world history class and never fully understand or care about. Cradle of civilization, have no idea what that is. Let's just get to ancient Greece and Egypt already. Hi, I learned that last year. Or at least that's how I felt when Mesopotamia. I was Mesopotamia. So I went back, refreshed myself and all that information, and let me clear it up for you. Mesopotamia back in the day was where modern day Iraq and part of Syria are today. So basically, it's an ancient civilization located in the Middle East. That is... If I remember, Mesopotamia means... Crap, it's like something between two lands or something like that. Where you would find structures like the one that we see depicted here in Minecraft. So, knowing the real-life structure that these monuments are based on, we can start to get clues as to what their intended use was. Something between two rivers. I think. In the Minecraft. You see, in ancient Mesopotamia, a ziggurat's main purpose was religious. It was meant Can't to connect remember. heaven and earth. They're thought to have been built to literally house the gods. As such, yeah. only priests were allowed to get inside of the ziggurats. And this hypothetical religious use seems to be supported by Minecraft. You see, I'm happy I worked this last year. ...is the fact that underneath the monument are 23 giant pillars that stretch down to the ocean floor. And it's always 23, unless, of course, there's some weird spawn hiccup. But that 23 hmm. number, I've said it so many times this episode, it seems so oddly specific, right? It has got to mean something. And wouldn't you know it, I think it does. You see, the number 23 is just one of those numbers that's considered to be really important to humans. It's hmm. a prime number, which all already makes it special. It's the number of chromosome pairs that we have in our body. It's basketball star Michael Jordan's number. Mm. It's a really bad Jim Carrey movie all about the number 23. <laughs> so no, really important stuff here. But all joking aside, there's even something called the 23 Enigma. Essentially a belief that the number has some sort of magical or mystical significance because of how much it shows up in our day-to-day -day lives. So when it comes to numbers, 23 is kind of a big deal. Just behind top 10, lucky 7, and I guess unlucky 13. But when it comes to religion, 23 is an even bigger deal. You see, mm. in the Islamic faith, there's the Quran. It's the Islamic sacred book, just like Christians have themselves the Bible and Judaism has the Torah. The Quran yeah. is believed to be the word of God as dictated to the Prophet Muhammad. And it took, get this, mm -hmm. 23 years for the entire book to be revealed. Uh. It's also Muslim belief that the first verses of the Quran were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad on the 23rd night of the ninth Islamic month. So again, in the Islamic yeah, it's faith, important. the number 23 matters a lot, meaning that those 23 pillars in the Minecraft Ocean Monument could very easily be referencing important pieces of religious architecture found around the Middle East. No, ziggurats aren't mosques, where Islamic faith is currently practiced, but they are connected by geographic region and religious connotation. Now, here is where everything comes together. If Minecraft Ocean Monuments were indeed places of religious significance, where an ancient race of people believed gods could come down onto the earth and live, it could explain the box of gold encased in dark prismarine with sea lanterns an offering corners but to understand why you have to be familiar with the kaaba the kaaba oh. is a black cube building at the center of islam's most important mosque the great What's mosque that? the most important place in that islam. makes so, so much sense that practitioners of islam are almost required to take a pilgrimage to see this once in their life and give worship there why well it's thought that the kaaba is the house of god the sacred house the connection between heaven and 
the earth. The Kaaba is a sacred place with an inside of gold and marble, but on the outside, it appears to just be a large black cube of dark granite. Just like we see in the game with the dark prismarine being on the outside of those golden cubes. In each of the corners in Minecraft is a sea lantern. And would you know it, each corner of the Kaaba also has itself a special symbolic significance, most often pointing to one key location from Islamic history. So could it be that the guardians of Minecraft are protecting the most sacred treasure of all, the location, or at least the perceived location, of God himself? It sounds crazy, but remember, the ending of Minecraft does indeed have two godlike figures speaking with each other about your gameplay. The fact that gods exist in the canonical universe of Minecraft is an established part of the lore. I mean, a lot of the details really line up here. The ziggurat structure connects us to the Middle East and Islamic tradition. The 23 mm -hmm. pillars and their importance to Islamic faith, covering up the golden, important interior of a building with a dark stone exterior just like the Kaaba. The perfect yeah. cubic shape of both of those structures. That, that seems way too of the corners. The need to much have of the a coincidence. This place at all. Heck, even the name. This is the Ocean Monument. It isn't a ruin. It's not a temple. It's a monument. Monument is a word used to honor a place of historical significance, a place of the dead, or an important figure like a god. You don't call the building that houses your sponge room a monument. Oh yeah, and it's worth mentioning here as one last final note, the one practical function of the ziggurat was actually to serve as just a high place on which the priests could escape rising water that would flood the Mesopotamian areas every year. Rising water, huh? Maybe the underwater monuments weren't quite so underwater. So we have ourselves the heat seat laser shooting fish that might have been man-made to protect an underwater monument dedicated to what may or may not be an ancient god now the only question is who built it why is it here underwater? the drowns and that my friends is explained through two words the drown but that theory will have to wait for another oh you tease that's just a theory a game theory thanks for watching I usually knock on school for teaching us things that we wouldn't be using in the future. I gotta give it to social studies. It's helping me become a theorist. Jesus Christ, will you stay plugged in? Oh my goodness, this is... Frustrating. See at least, but my goodness, I would not understand absolutely anything if I wasn't if I hadn't learned that last year in seventh grade. Seriously, I understood all of that. We we literally learned about that sort of stuff, the Kaaba. Agent Mesopotamia, all of that. We we learned it. For freaking perfect timing. Literally the year after I learned about it, it comes back in the form of a game theory. Even more so about Minecraft. Oh yeah, it's all come together. But still, what, what, what a tease, Matt. What a tease. Oh, come on. So what a tease. <laughs> I was literally just wondering about the, the drought. When we were getting into the drown, and then you pull it right from under my feet. You, you show it, and then you snatch it away. So I guess we're going to have to wait to, until probably next week. As much as I hate to say it. But hey, I would still be watching it. And you got to remember... Soon is that charity live stream. Go ahead and go watch it when, when it happens. Anyways, 
I'll see you guys then, I guess. Whatever next reaction or FNAF's sister location video, go watch it. See y'all. I guess. I'm bad at outros.